coming back to what you said, like people who were naturally gifted, like for example, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was asked once um, why or how is he so good? How does he have that gift? And his answer for that was that the reason he's so good is because every day of his life he was trying to get better of what he was the day before mm -hmm. which basically means he's competing against himself not against others yeah. uh, the best uh, do you think that brings back to the mental game uh, that's what makes the outstanding archers or any other athlete stand out from the others when they compete against themselves Yep. I think that's a true statement. Archery is an individual sport. Um, you know, it's, it's you and the target, it's you and the arrow. Um, you're the only one pulling the bowstring back. You're the only one letting go of, of the trigger. Um, and it's, it's all about you, whether you put it in or out. You know, you know we're not in a full contact sport. You know, nobody's giving us an elbow or, or blocking a shot, you know. So, um, it, it, it would be a true fact that probably the best archers in the world or, or, or every archer really is competing against themselves. Even though you could be in a room with a thousand archers, you know, you are competing against yourself. Because you've shot at, at the elite level, you've shot perfect score time after time after time after time. And usually the only thing that will um, keep one of the elite archers from not shooting a perfect score or near perfect score is the mental game. It was a mental breakdown. Something during the shot pulled their mind out of the routine and because they weren't in the routine when the, when the shot broke, it broke and the arrow went low, left, high, you know, it went somewhere and that's just usually through uh, just a lack of uh, mental focus. You got pulled out of the shot. So will it be safe to say that uh, the mental game is more important than the physical game? Um, probably a little bit more important. The physical game is important. You, you have to have good stamina or strength um, to be able to, to pull the bow back, you know, 60, 80, 90 times during a tournament. Uh, you still need to have uh, great mental control to know when not to shoot. That's one of the things that a lot of archers struggle with is that they pull the bow back and no matter what happens, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna shoot the arrow. Yeah, we've been working on that. Right. This is one of the issues that I had and what I was standing there and aiming and my, my dot just wiggle around the, the center and just fighting to get it back and, and wasting time instead of just let it down and restarting. And yep. we've been working on that and I think that's helped a lot. Yeah. Um, do you think working with a personal trainer, physical trainer, helps for archery? I think it would um, to get a baseline of conditioning. Uh, you know, it's it's good to get an idea of maybe areas of weakness, um, areas of strength. So working with a, a physical trainer, you know, to and a few times to start out with just to to get a baseline of where you're at. You know. Physical, physical wise, you know, everybody, you know, will talk about, you know, how much they weigh and things like that. But uh, working with a trainer would then give you an idea of physical, um, physical condition, you know, not how many sit-ups I can do or this or that, but they can give you an overall idea of, you know, your your shoulders are stronger than your core or your core is weak. You need to strengthen your core. Archery starts from the ground up, so it starts with strong legs, strong core, strong shoulders. So it's a full package. Uh, so working with a, with, a, with a personal trainer or a strength conditioning coach, they can give you um, areas that need improvement. Other than the regular uh, training tips about uh, techniques and mechanics for the bow and tuning, uh, what would be your biggest tip, you think, for me as I'm storming this now? Uh, the, the biggest thing is going to be mental focus. You know, we can get through tuning, we can get through equipment, um, 
it's going to be mental focus. Being able to draw the bow back and focus on shot execution 60 times during a tournament. And being able, and having the mental focus of knowing when not to shoot an arrow. That's critical. That's, that's the important thing. You'll see pros, they'll draw the bow back and they'll shoot, you know, 95, 99% of their shots. But, the, but they'll be the, the good ones that'll be out there, you'll see them draw the bow up. And, you know, they may do it once a tournament, right? Maybe they don't do it once a tournament, maybe they do it zero times. But over the course of a weekend, like Vegas, they'll draw the bow up, and if they let the bow down, they knew that shot wasn't going to go in the bullseye. Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a game of percentages, right? Yes. You know, you're going to pull the bow back, and you're going to have everything's going to line up. The mental clarity is there. All the, <coughs> all, the, all the equipment, peep sight, sight, bubbles sitting there, not a sit in the bullseye. Everything is great. And all of a sudden something goes wrong and it could still be there, but something distracts your mind. And that's when the, the elite shooters, the top shooters know, I should let this down. I shouldn't shoot this shot because the, because it's a percentage. It's probably, you know, not a high percentage that this arrow is going to hit the bullseye. And in your game, you miss once in Vegas, Yes. you got to be a lucky dog. Absolutely. You know? So, you know, it's 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 a it's a very high level of competition that you're in. Like Lancaster is a different animal because you can you can shoot a ten and still be in the show. We got you got to work your way up. In Vegas, if you shoot if you shoot a nine, you know pretty much you're gonna go to a lucky dog, and then it's even harder yes. because then it's just you know now you're competing against a whole bunch of other guys that want to get in and. That's a whole other mental thing where you think, oh my God, I gotta get in, I gotta get in, yeah, I can't miss. Yeah. You know, it's exciting to watch. It's even more intense. Yeah. Um, big question um, about general pro division. There's a wide conversation about pro divisions, about pro archers, about uh, um, how to expand the pro division. And there are a few ideas that I heard around uh, one of them was uh, setting a bottom score for specific tournaments for archers. So once they hit that score in a qualifi qualifying round, the next time they gotta go into the pro division. Uh, the second one was if uh, in qualifying round they shoot s equal or better score than the bottom qualifier in the pro division, which happens. Uh, they'll have to go to the, the pro division and other ideas uh, like lowering from 600 rounds to 450 rounds and that a lot of people that don't have the stamina to go to 60 arrows uh, will qualify for the next round that would make the next the elimination rounds much wider now instead of 50 people shooting against each other you have 100 150 people shooting and Anything can happen in one shoot off, uh, and that might change the game. What do you think about that? I don't know. I think in, in, in the pro division, you know, I think the organizations that, that run these events need to work on getting the a different level of sponsorship um, outside of the, of the archery industry. When you look at um, We'll just say uh, golf as an example. Golf and archery are similar in that it's an individual sport. It's yes. you and the arrow, you and the golf ball. We got to hit a bullseye. The golf got to hit into a, into a teacup, right? But the difference is it's stand outstanding with the payouts. You know, you go to a golf tournament, they get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, part of that is entry fee. A lot of that is television rights. A lot of that is corporate sponsors. Um, I think that archery needs to look at doing something or, or getting to the, look at the model that golf has used to get where they are um, to create that type of excitement and money payout for archery where people then want to be a pro 
you don't have to worry about where the cut is and because golf doesn't worry about that. Golf, you know, you're L PGA Pro Tour and you're on the tour, but archery doesn't have that type of stuff yet. You know, they have, you know, they have tournaments you go to and things like that. And when you go to a when you go to a golf tournament and you're on the TV tour, you make a lot of money. You go there, you try out, and you have a cut line. And even if you don't make the cut line, I think there's still money involved in that, right? But it's not like that in archery. So I think that if they can develop a business model within all of the organizations, because there's a lot of organizations in archery. There's World Archery, USA Archery, NFAA, ISA, IBO. Um, in golf, there's the United States Golf Association. I haven't looked at it much further than that, but I don't think there's a lot of splinter organizations. There's tours, right? There's TV tours and things like that, but they all follow kind of one standard guideline, right? Uh, yeah, so arch well. Archery doesn't archery doesn't do that. Archery's kind of splintered. It's kind of because they go to the hunting enthusiasts, they go to the target enthusiasts. So there's all different organizations, and because of that, in my belief, is in that fracturing, right? Big corporate sponsors that throw money at all these other types of, of sports or industries really don't come into archery because they, I don't think they know what to do with it. Because it's fractured to small pieces. Yeah. Um, coming from that, because of those fractures, you think it would be a good idea to have those division expand by changing the structure for example, lowering it from 600 to 450, that will allow more people to come in. More people will come in, more audience will come, families come to watch, friends will come to watch. They will see that they will get more interested, they will get into the game. Uh, events will get bigger, bigger means more sponsors. You think that is something possible to? They gotta try. Right. Is, it, is it possible? Um, it, it could be. I mean, it, 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 in, in changing the format to get more participation can bring more sponsorship because that's what the sponsors want to see. The sponsors want to see the participation level go up within the industry because then more people that are associated with, with the sport can then look at a sponsor's um, logo and say, oh, I'm going to buy that, you know, you know, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go out and buy a Chevy truck now because they're sponsoring, you know, the Las Vegas tournament or, yes. you know, they're sponsoring the Lancaster tournament, you know, um, those there'll are the type of, correlation, of yeah, yeah, there'll be some correlation. Those are the things I think that, you know, archery somehow needs to figure out how to embrace. How do they change their business model to attract the people that are going to put money into the industry so that the pro watchers, you know, or the people that are, that are, that are semi-pro or whatever can make a living. You know, there's a few archers that make a living in archery, a few, not a lot, there's a few. Um, but there should be a lot more, you know. There's tons of golfers that make a living yes. just hitting the golf ball around. Um, you know, archery should one day become like that. A tough question maybe for you, yeah. you are a recurve archer, I'm a compound archer. Um, do you think that compound should become an Olympic? One day, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. One day archery will be in the Olympics. Um, whether it's 2020 or 2024, you know, I know that they've been um, pushing to get it put in. Um, and I think that the compound bow is becoming more widely adopted around the world. That was one of the things when they were first trying to do it, they would say, well, it's not widely adopted around the world. Well, it is now, you know, it's, it's you know, it's all over, you know, compound archery um, is exciting to watch, just like recurve archery is. Um, it's in all the major sports in the world games. Um, you know, I don't see a, a big reason why it's not in the Olympic sport. Um, it could be just that they have to add so many more athletes that they have to take a sport out. So there's a lot of politics that go into why it's not an Olympic sport. But I think definitely if it's not in 2020, it's probably going to be in 2024. 
I think that some within the within the next two Olympics, I think that there'll be compound archers. I definitely hope so. Yeah. As a compound archer, and uh, seeing that there's so many, I think it seems that it's going to the direction that compound archer will be much bigger than retail archery, and there's no reason not to support that. Um, so what about viewing archery, uh, excitement of, of viewing the, the, the competition? Uh, like golf and archery, there's, there's a lot of similarities and it's an individual sport. You don't play a team like basketball or even you don't have the excitement like uh, an individual sport like snowboard, skateboarding, they're more excited to view. You just see an archer standing on the line and shooting over and over again. Uh, so for the first time viewer or someone that is not a family member of a sh or an archer or a friend of an archer, it's kind of boring to watch. Um, what do you think can be done to change or improve that? For TV, it's all in the editing. You know, it's, it's in the announcing. So when you, when you watch, you know, you wouldn't think that, you know, sitting at home watching Somebody hit a golf ball is, is very exciting, but a lot of it just has to do with the, the TV editing, the announcing, things like that. So I'm sure that they, I know Lancaster has done a lot to work with um, their live stream announcing and their, and their editing, and they do a fantastic job at it. Um, I know World Archery, USA Archery has, has done a lot with editing their, um, their events to fit on YouTube, onto the Archery channel and things like that, that make watching it exciting because they're able to cut back and forth as because in archery, you know, there's a lot of downtime, scoring, getting your arrows, things like that. So they're able to edit some of that slow time out or stick a lot of interesting facts, just like golf, you know? Yes. Um, so they're, they're getting there, you know? It's, it's not just simply watching if you go to an event and just simply watching somebody shoot, that can get a little boring because everything is so far away. You can't tell exactly where the arrow hit unless you have the big screens up and things like that. So, you know, going to an outdoor event um, could be a little challenging to, to get people to show like golf, you know, to get people around when they're making the putts and teeing off and things like that. You know, for archery, um, for standard archery might be a little tough. I mean, sometimes maybe for 3D and things like that, they might be able to get a gallery around yes. an archer and, and watch them make the shots and things like that. I think the 3D archery is more similar to golf than any other division yeah. of archery. And you walk from one pot to pot, mm -hmm. you walk from one target to the other and shoot it. I think there's a lot of similarity over there, and that might be more interesting to watch. Um, do you have a favorite watch? Um, my favorite archers, I don't know, recurve. It's tough. There's a bunch. Um, growing up, my favorite archers to watch was uh, Jay Bars. You know, not that much older than me, but you know, when I was younger, he was he was much more far advanced. Um, Darrow Pace was fun to watch, Rick McKinney was fun to watch. Now, you know, watching a lot of the guys like Brady Ellison is great to watch, Bush Johnson is great to watch. You, know, you can learn from watching archers. You know, one of my favorite compound archers to watch is Dave Cousins. He's, he's a great shot, you know. Yes, um, I do that a lot, to watch a lot of archers, yeah. to, to see yeah. the execution, yeah. the, the, the mental game, or how they react to shots. Yeah. It's definitely Jesse's good, good. Levi Morgan's good. You know, these these are all excellent, excellent shooters to watch. Do you have a favorite coach? Um, there's a couple out there. Um, Dick Tone is a, is a is a great coach. Hardy Ward is a great coach. Um, these are guys I've, I've known, you know, for years. You know, Tim Strickland out there is a, is a, is a good coach, knowledgeable, um, and these are uh, good structure coaches. You know, they're, they're, they've been around, they've shot, they, they know archery. You know? Is there a coach that you will say today that you will want to work with as an archer, that he will coach you? Uh, I'm kind of past that a little bit. You know, <laughs> I, I tell people that, you know, I'm semi-retired, right? Yes. So I shoot for fun. 
you know. So I'm, I'm, I, I still like to, to shoot and, and get better, but I'm not any longer like massively training and, and you know looking to get critiqued or coached, or, you know, things like that. You know, I, I will attend a seminar now and again to you know um, refresh myself, you know. So when when I get an opportunity, I may talk to, to some people just about a little bit stuff. You're like, oh, I'll watch somebody and I'll see a coach and I'll say, oh, yeah, that guy, you know, we'll talk about somebody just to get an insight onto what they see and what I see because I work with archers, you know, and I, I know um, archery is always evolving, you know, and and I know a lot, I don't know it all, so you know, it's always good to. Uh, pick up a book or read something and, and just, you know, keep fresh with what's, you know, the current trend and, and watch how people work with archers and, you know, it's mental side technique, you know, it's still good to to go to a seminar, like I said, or something like that, but I'm not actively looking to say, hey, you know, I want to get better, coach me. I'm, I'm past that now. I just like to, I like to shoot for fun and if I'm able to go to a tournament and you know, place well. I'm like, okay, good. Look, I'm a 50 year old guy, and I'm beating up on some of these kids. So, you know, I still got. So, is used to do. Uh, is there an archer other than me that you would like to coach? Um, I like to work with with anybody that's willing to learn. You know, so. But is there an archer that you will say, I love this archer. I would love to work with him as a coach to be his coach. Um, I would say no. Um, there isn't anybody that, because, you know, it's like, oh, I'd love to work with that guy. And you go to talk to him, he's like, yeah, I don't want to work with you. So. <laughs> I, if he, he wanted to work with you, he or she yeah, wanted if somebody, to work if somebody, with you. If somebody came and asked me and said, you know, hey, can you work with me? Um, you know, yes. You know, I'm open to working with anybody. Um, but there, there, you know, there isn't, I don't, I don't look at it that way where it's like, oh, you know, I'd love to work with that guy. He needs my help. Um, you know, I don't, I don't look at coaching in, in that aspect, you know, I'll see people, I'll talk to them, like, hey, how's it going, and, and you know, may, you know, may offer a suggestion and things like that, but I don't, I don't look to be like, you know, oh, you know, I really want to coach that guy. I, I don't look at it that way. Okay. Well, Joe McGlynn, I'd like to thank you for doing this interview and All for right. hosting the New York State Indoor Championship here at Proline Archery. Uh, it was a pleasure, it was good for me to shoot over here, um, that's my own range, so yeah. it's always nice to do that, to shoot a big competition uh, at your own range. Well, Joe McGlynn, thank you very much. All right. Okay. I'm Joe McGlynn, and you're watching Storm It, Win It. <laughs>